Hi you guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. You are watching DMB's channel, my name is Laszlo and I do graphic design and illustration. In this video I thought I would sit down and give you some no-nonsense actual advice on improving your design portfolios. Now portfolio advice for artists and designers is well nothing new as a video topic in the graphic design corner of YouTube content. But what I found is most of these videos are way too hang up on the formalities and the details of what makes an aesthetically pleasing portfolio, which let's be honest is very subjective. So I thought for my take I would just keep things very simple and share some conceptual evergreen points that no one really shared with me about creative portfolios, so I had to learn them the hard way. Tips, tricks, morals, hindsights and all that. As I said my focus is graphics and digital art, but I want to include advice which you can utilize no matter what you specialize in within the creative fields. Yeah, we are getting very deep in this one. Let's do it. Tip number one. It's all personal. Here are some cold hard facts young designers and artists should be aware of. Whenever you're messaging senior people in the creative industries and asking them for portfolio advice on very specific things like how many projects should I include in my portfolio or what website builder to use or should I use my own name for my brand, chances are you are already approaching portfolio building with the wrong mindset. A good creative portfolio looks and feels like a design project within itself, and as any good design project it needs to have a sense of being a one-of-a-kind piece of work. You shouldn't just show what you think is expected from you, or what you think will get the most attention. Your focus should be on the ability to show what you are capable of within your creative field in the best possible way. People tend to say you should aim for 6 to 8 projects within your portfolio, which is reasonable enough advice, but personally I think it's better to have 4 mind-blowingly good design projects than having 8 projects of mixed quality. If you feel like your creative personality can come across and make an impression using only a handful of projects, then don't be hanging up on quantity, okay? This should be your approach toward any aspects of portfolio building. You really need to make this thing yours. Chances are the people who will look through your portfolio are the kind of people who look through dozens, maybe hundreds of other people's work on a very regular basis. Which means they have seen all the trendy things, all the tricks, all the one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter solutions already. So keep that in mind and don't feel foolish for not going with the flow. If you hate Squarespace for example, even though they are all the rage right now, just use something else. Or I don't know, me for example, I never really print stuff out. But let's say you are an illustrator who loves using watercolors or acrylics in your practice, in which case it does make sense to use physical printed out materials within your portfolio. Even if your favorite YouTuber told you not to do so. You know what I mean? Now this obviously applies to the work itself as well. Don't people please and tick out boxes when it comes to your creative projects. Don't have a branding project, oil paintings and animations next to each other if it doesn't feel authentic to your creative practice. Only include stuff that is really you. Even if this means you are using some fake projects instead of real commissioned work. Do whatever it takes to show the kind of stuff you want to be hired for. If you wanna be designing movie posters for example, but all you have in your portfolio is logo design projects, it is very unlikely that someone will commission a poster from you. Why would they? Art directors and the people who hire designers and artists, they wanna see proof before they invest their money into someone they don't know. No one's got the time to look through, I don't know, a motion designer's portfolio and think, hmm, I wonder if this person can do children's book illustration as well. This might sound a little harsh, but all I'm trying to get across is don't wait for anyone's permission to execute your dream projects and only the kind of projects that you want to be doing. Try building that very personal thing that you have been tinkering with in the back of your head for months, maybe years, and prove to the world that you can do it, even before anyone asks. Which leads me to my next point. Tip number two. My past mistakes. Oh there. The very reason I wanted to make this video because I got rid of my personal portfolio website lately. I put it on hold, not knowing when or if I ever will activate it again. Now, in this old website I broke my work down onto three distinctive categories. I had a page for graphic design work, I had a page for illustrations and another one for creative advertising work. And I used to think to myself, how cool is this? This is Les and his three different sides to him. Surely this shows my range and people will be amazed by this level of skill set, right? 
wrong. As time went on, I realized that this website is nothing more than a little time capsule of old, irrelevant work, stuff that no one's really looking up anymore, not even me. And to be honest, I think in this day and age, unused web pages are doing more harm than good for you and your creative career. Look, what I'm trying to say here is your portfolio is not just a collection of old work you have completed. It should not feel like a room full of old trophies doing nothing but collecting cobwebs. For me, there were definitely pieces of works and projects in this old website, which I only kept there for vanity, because they picked up an award or something. But some of these were for the kind of works which I'm not even interested in doing anymore. Your portfolio needs to show the inside of your brain. It needs to inform the viewer how your mind works when it comes to creative problem solving. And as a creative, a creator, an artist, that is something that you should be constantly perfecting. You should be changing the way you work, your opinion changes on certain things and topics, you mature and grow as an artist or a person. That's why it's very important to keep your portfolio up to date, instead of showing off years and years old projects. Not to mention what was technically impressive a couple years ago, might be old news in this day and age. Your portfolio is never done. Think of it like open-ended storytelling. You start telling your story and leave the ending of that story open, so prospective clients can imagine how the story ends if they come on board and they decided to work with you. Ideally, they can visualize based on your body of work and your thinking what you could potentially do for them, right? It's all about them. Does that make sense? Anyway, the last tip, tip number three. Pick a mission, not a niche. Now this one took me literally years to get right. When I was younger, all my teachers, mentors, all their colleagues kept repeating the very same thing to me when they looked at my work. Pick a niche, pick a niche, pick a niche. I'll never forget this moment when I put one of my very earliest portfolio PDFs in front of my third year illustration lecturer. And before he even opened it up, he looked at the cover and said, Laszlo, I'm already seeing two different art styles here and I haven't even turned the page yet. You can imagine, I just went completely pale in the face. I used to gag, genuinely feel sick, whenever people were like, you need to specify, you need to niche down, focus on one thing and all that. Ah. Little 20 year old Laszlo was like, why? Why can't I be a concept artist and a graphic designer and an animator as well? Hmm. Hindsight is a funny thing, you know. Now, fast forward half a decade, I think I finally understand what they were talking about. Having a niche doesn't necessarily mean what I thought it means. It doesn't mean that you're not allowed to dabble into all these different creative disciplines. All of that is fine. In fact, encouraged to some extent. As long as you have a clear idea why you are doing all those different things. As a young designer, there was no sense of direction in my portfolio. So all this dabbling, constantly switching gears between art direction and creative advertising and illustration and graphic design just made me look like I don't know what I'm doing. Does any of that sound familiar? So what I realized as time went on is your work needs to stand for something. You need a mission. Think of the biggest, most famous people of all time. They are seemingly going at 100 miles per hour in terms of their work. People like Elon Musk, for example, who's making electric cars and designing spaceships and now robots as well, apparently. His mission, per se, is not car making or spacecraft design. His niche can be boiled down to one very simple word. Innovation. Or, if you hate his guts and you want another example, think of this guy, Lin-Manuel Miranda, who's a rapper, singer, director, theater guy, songwriter, movie director. His niche? Representation. I figured out that this way of thinking works with most famous creatives and creators, who are seemingly doing way too many different things that you could just put them in a niche box. So I encourage all of you to go and have a think what is it that you want to be known for. Because at the end of the day it's going to be one thing. Now I believe the answer to that lies within not what you are creating, but why you are creating. Hmm? I realize that this is not an easy assignment. For me, for example, it took me like 10 years to realize why I'm doing what I'm doing. I quite simply want to work on designs which utilizes the power of illustration. I want to create beautiful things which take the art back to design. I talked about this in previous videos, how I believe there should be a stronger connection between, well, all the creative disciplines overall. And since the whole Dancia Rampola brand has been built on this kind of philosophy, I probably will never shut up about this. Cause man, that's my niche. I'm the graphic designer who draws. I realize this is not a unique mission, but it doesn't have to be something as poetic as innovation or representation. 
I'm aware that my way of thinking is not gonna change the whole world, but ever since I materialized all these thoughts for myself and been trying to radiate this in my body of work, I do feel like my clients are picking up on that. And maybe for the first time ever, I am actually attracting the right clients and the right projects, which is what this is all about at the end of the day. So let that be the morale of the story. If you manage to create a portfolio that goes beyond of what you have done and explains why you have done it, it may be giving out some little clues to the viewer what else you could be doing, then you know you got a good thing going. Okay? Guys, I got a whole playlist here where I talk about all this sort of arty designy stuff, which I will link down there somewhere, you'll find it. So to make sure you're not missing out on any of that and more content, join our creative crew. As you just witnessed, I'm all about graphics and illustration, and my partner Jacqueline's content is focusing on interior architecture and design. Insights, tutorials, and everything in between. Please leave a like to help us reach more people with this channel, and I'll hope to see you this time next week with something else. Okay? Bye!